border crossing. It's a little surreal. I'm, I wasn't nervous until we just got here, but I don't know why I'm nervous. It's gonna be a long driving day, but honestly, I kind of hope we can make it to Mahuala today. Very stressful and hectic. Very stressful. Probably detour. biggest lesson of today is come with significant amounts of pesos. Go slow. If you're new here, we're Liz and Dennis, and we're about to embark on a six-month trip to Mexico with two of our RV friends. Our trip got off to a rough start when we discovered our scooter wasn't holding a charge. But being on a deadline, we took off anyways and we made the long trek to Texas, stopping in Houston for Liz to renew her passport before making it to Laredo to meet our friends, the New State Nomads, and I'm Not Lost, I'm RVing, before crossing the border. This is the ceremonious presentation of the walkie-talkies, and with these comes great responsibility. So, make wise decisions. Wait, isn't this Why'd you give it to Dennis make to make decisions? wise decisions? Because <laughs> you backed up. Oh, it's up. over. I'm going to be like, hey. Breaker, breaker. <laughs> click, click, Break 19. We are at the border crossing. It's a little surreal. I'm, I wasn't nervous until we just got here, but I don't know why I'm nervous. Yeah, but crossing a border is always nerve wracking because it's like really official. You got people in police uniforms and yeah, I mean, you're leaving the country, so. And this is definitely different than crossing the border into Canada, right? Where you speak the same language, it's a little bit more relaxed. It's still a border crossing, it's just definitely this is a next level. So we have all of our paperwork prepared. Um, you need, if you have a financed vehicle, you need to have a letter of authorization from your lender to say that you are allowed to leave the country with a financed vehicle. So we got that from our bank. We also have our vehicle registration, our passports, thanks to Driver's our- Driver's licenses. Um, thanks to our trip into Houston. Um, I also tried to complete the form. There's like a tourist visa called the FMME form. Um, you can technically fill that out when you get to the border. So I was able to fill out the FMME online and pay for myself, but unfortunately, Dennis's wouldn't let me, it wouldn't let me pay for Dennis's. So we have his form started and printed, we just have to pay for it here. So from what we understand, you will first pay for your visa, um, which was like 533 pesos, and then once you get your visa approved, you then would get your permit for your vehicles. And there's a deposit you have to place for the permit. You get the sticker that you put on your car. And when you leave the country, you return that sticker, which shows that you stayed in for the proper amount of time according to your visa. So once we're done actually crossing through the border checkpoint and then getting all of our paperwork settled, we're gonna try to make a super long jump past Monterey all the way into Montwala, which if we can do that, we will have less travel days and about three days to actually hang out in Montwala. It's gonna be a long driving day, but honestly, I kind of hope we can make it to Montwala today because we've been moving every, almost every single day since we left and I'm ready to slow down. Absolutely. So we'll see how fast we get through the border crossing. We're here like 10 minutes before they actually open and we're, I think we're fourth in line. So we're doing pretty good on timing. Hopefully this will be a pretty quick process and we can get into Mexico. We filled out all of the paperwork. We got through. They definitely did an inspection for not only us, but all of our RVs. Um, they sent us through like an x-ray machine. They didn't actually come inside and go through anything. It was really just to make sure we didn't have any contraband people. or illegal things or people. Yeah. So once we filled out the paperwork, which took about probably 30 to 45 minutes for each of us. You definitely want to keep copies of every single thing that they give you with all the stamps and copies of the sticker and paperwork just to prove that you went through all of the right processes to get here. So we're going to head into Saltillo, which is just um, south of Monterey, which is the closest city, and we have to go get some pesos for the toll road. So that's our next mission. Well, I feel like we're learning lessons already, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, get money before you come, even if it's more expensive and just get more money when it's cheaper from an ATM once you're in the country. We are trying to find 
out if Banco New State <laughs> is going to be able to supply enough pesos for us to get to the toll roads or if we need to stop in Nuevo Laredo to get money from an ATM, uh, which we don't really want to do. We're driving in Mexico. How's it feel? Uh, interesting. Oh, hold on. I got an evasive maneuver. Oh. Yeah, we find There's what we've heard about. Actually, the road so far up until this point has been wonderful. Probably better than it was definitely in Louisiana or Texas. God, look at the mountain. Oh, dude. What is the mist coming off them? Or the, it's like white. Do you see that? Yeah. This drive is beautiful. It's kind of like desert in the beginning, really not much of anything except industrial. It's flat. And then all of a sudden you just start to see all the trees and then you start to get into the mountains and it is beautiful. It reminds me a lot of Big Bend, but it really is gorgeous. And the road is so smooth. Other than that one little bumpy patch we experienced oh, okay. right after crossing the border, smooth as can be. Well, we weren't on, we weren't on the toll road yet, so once you get on the toll road, it's as nice as any road in the U.S. Like, oh, for sure. It's really nice. Way better than Louisiana. <laughs> any road in Louisiana. <laughs> found an ATM after a very long uh, Google yeah. detour. Yeah. Very stressful and hectic. Very stressful Probably Google detour. Biggest lesson of today is come with significant amounts of pesos so that you can get through the tolls to get to your destination. Yeah. <laughs> but since we were here and found the ATM, we decided to also fill up so that we don't have to stop again until we get to our next destination, which is Matehuala. But when you get to a gas station, you do not fill up the gas yourself. There is an, there's a, there's an a, attendant, an attendant at who, the pump. who does it for you. Mm -hmm. And then you just either give them card or cash and he asks how you want to pay. And um, I suggest walking with them because we've heard that, like, I guess it's very common to be scammed or you have your card swiped for information at gas stations. So if you're just with them, never just give the card and stay in the, in the vehicle. It is a little bit more expensive. We didn't fill up all the way. We did 10 gallons and um, it cost us $42. So that was about $4.20 a gallon, which is much more expensive than the yeah, United States. It's like $1.50 more. Yeah. We've been, we, you know, we've been seeing $2.60, $2.70, sometimes $2.80. Yeah, but I think, we're, I think we're figuring it out. Once we get this down and kind of understand how things work, uh, I think it'll be easier. Yeah, there are literal bumps in the road <laughs> and proverbial bumps in the road and We've hit a few of each. Yep. So, but on word to Matawala. We just got to Matehuala and we're staying at the Las Palmas Hotel which has RV sites but to get to the RV sites you have to go under an overhang right next to the office. Go slow. Yeah. Good. Peso up to have cash on hand. Right when we turn on the GoPro is when it gets hairy. It gets hairy. 